Non-government organizations such as Doctors Without Borders. Right now you can see that a new patient has just come in. Yeah, the medical equipment is not coming. It is very serious. And if you don't, we don't move now, I mean, we, we will lose patients. You know, we, we can hear about uh, a large number of people who are on the run after there's been an attack in a village or something. It's very difficult to get an overview of how people's health has been affected. So, whereas if MSF are already there and they're saying, this is what we're seeing, um, X number of people coming through, these are the problems they're facing, that's the kind of information that, that helps a lot. Having a close relationship with MSF enabled me to then keep up to date on what was happening in very isolated areas and literally a phone caller where you can suddenly know there's been an attack which may have taken a day or several days to come out via other means. It's effectivement souvent très lourd de devoir accueillir uh, des équipes de communication. Or souvent ils ne réalisent pas la, la, la nécessité uh, uh, vraiment de communiquer sur nos projets. C'est essentiel car ça nous sert à montrer à l'extérieur ce que MSF fait et ça nous sert également à montrer à l'extérieur ce que les populations vivent. The visibility in the media is linked to our financial independence. More and more we want to work in conflict areas, areas that are very sensitive on the political landscape. And there, of course, when you have the financial backings of private donors, which means your mother, your father, <laughs> the baker on the, on, the, on the corner, these people give money to MSF without any political agenda. And that's why we need to communicate about MSF, so that these private donors know why they give money to us. And then, of course, we need to look at the, 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 the local sensitivities. People don't have access to the medication because of the embargo. Currently, we, had, uh, we have 55 admitted. So delivery free, treatment free. One of the added values for operations when it comes to local communication is increasing acceptance. Uh, it means that uh, the MSF doctor and the MSF nurse are able to go and do their work safely in an environment that understands them better. Many patients are too afraid to go to the hospital to seek treatment. And, you know, really we'd like to try and ensure, to try and get some medical aid and humanitarian aid to these people. Now you imagine you have a um, turmoil in Egypt, you've got conflict in Libya, there is the earthquake in Japan, and then uh, we are calling the journalists about Ivory Coast. So that means really, you know, insistently calling them and saying there's a civil war going on in this country with lots of uh, displacement and, and wounded civilians and nobody's talking about it. It is hard sometimes to convince editors that um, humanitarian crises are worth visiting rather than just reporting on and saying this is how many are displaced, what's the added value of us going there and meeting them and talking to them, that's the challenge that we have. So it is a lot of effort. You have to not only send your material, but do a lot of follow-up calls. And really you have to convince the journalists that that is a story that is worth telling. Nous sommes des acteurs privilégiés dans le sens où nous, avons, nous voyons des situations où personne d'autre n'a accès. Et donc nous ne, nous, nous devons, euh, euh, en tant que, que, que MSF, de euh, en fait communiquer sur ces situations, comme par exemple dans le cas de, des violences sexuelles, et de montrer euh, au monde extérieur en fait des situations intenables. He hit and banged me against the wall to make me scream. Since we did not scream, we were beaten more and more, stronger and stronger. This is the place where the violence started in Fizi on the 1st of January. It was 7 p.m. and those who raped me were members of the military. It's very unlikely that these cases of rape in Fizi would have gotten any attention if MSF hadn't made them public. So in that particular case, following the press release, reporters started coming to Fizi. The UN put pressure on the army to investigate the cases. Some soldiers were arrested and later on uh, some leading figures were tried and convicted. So it's always an exercise difficult because it must be measured with the risks that are taken, notably for the patients and for the personnel of health. There is always one of the possibilities that we are even more cibled in consequence, because of course we will have people who will not like this take of parole. MSF is an organization today that is so important that the fact that we don't say anything is already a déjà une communication. Oui, c'est sûr et certain que la prise de parole fonctionne est un outil très très fort. Euh, donc c'est l'outil que nous utilisons vraiment quand nous voulons faire un changement fort et important et quand nous pensons que nous avons déjà tout essayé quelque part. 
Why do you think this is happening? Why are these medical staff being targeted in this way? The city ran a central business district uh, and a little further um, towards the presidential palace. A médecin sans frontières is organizing at the moment some mobile clinics. How much supplies do you have? Do you have supplies enough for a week? No, we have supplies for one or two days. At one or two days? Yeah, and then it's over.